DDQ. How's everybody doing today? I'm Epiphany. Uh, I came here in SGDQ 2022, and I'm back for more. Uh, last time we were playing on the same patch, we were doing what was called a package percent. It was the first category. Today we're upping the game. We're going one more milestone in, and with a twist, we're doing it in half the time. So without further ado, I think we need a count off. Does my couch want to provide that for me? Ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, count me down. In three, two, one. Go, go, go. All right, so to get everything started here, Satisfactory is a factory building game, as implied by the name. Uh, you want to do a couple different things, but mostly we're going to be trying to build a lot of parts to send back to our definitely not overlords living on Earth. Uh, I'm going to be focusing a little bit on running and picking up stuff. Uh, so if one of you want to talk about how movement works and stuff in this game, that would be swell. Sure. So uh, like all good video games, it's got slide, uh, slide jumping, which is the fastest way to move. So you'll see him doing that constantly. Uh, other important thing you'll see him doing at the moment is running around and picking up a whole bunch of materials from the ground. He's got a mixture of a bunch of plants, which we're going to be using for biomass to uh, burn and use as energy, but then also a bunch of parts from some downed ships that we're going to be selling later. One quick thing I did right there was I want to be able to fight these hogs. Uh, and even though they're in passive mode, uh, we can manipulate the AI to get them to run to us by swinging at the air. They get a little bit triggered by that. So we call that DoorDash. <laughs> Why do we call it DoorDash? Well, because we're going to cook them later. <laughs> Got to put that straight to your door. Tasty, Manual. tasty hog. So I'm also trying to set up this hot bar as fast as I can because I'm going to need that for not having to menu later while I'm actually building the factory. Yeah, so all these items he's picking up on the ground, uh, we're going to use to sell later, along with a whole bunch of hog DNA, don't worry about that, in order to purchase a bunch of different goods that we're going to use later in the run, because it's a lot easier to just pick up these items, sell them, and buy other pieces than building them manually. We're now going to get into the first factory building part of the game here, and you're going to notice I do something a little bit special. I don't uh, put inputs into any of these machines. Instead, I'm going to be using a glitch that we're going to talk about in a little bit called 007, and I'm just going to get them running with nothing in them. Sounds good, Mr. Bond. I'm also going to get the first milestone in this game, field research, which will allow us to unlock a few things, most notably overclocking, so we can take these machines and make them produce two and a half times as fast. This is our good friend Ada giving us voiceover. Yes, we love how much she contributes. She's what keeps you all on task, ultimately, when I can't be here to make sure. All right, so we're going to grab that power slug we were just producing and start researching using it. Uh, a lot of this run involves using things that we didn't earn to research things that we can't have. I'm going to be setting up this bug a little bit more here. So to explain a little bit about 007, uh, there's a way that you can trick machines uh, on this version of the game. Uh, we've actually downpatched a little bit. Uh, but you can, you can trick machines into thinking that they have all the inputs they need to produce anything that you want. Uh, so as long as there's a recipe for it, you can make infinite of it. Uh, needless to say, in a game about automation and factory building, that's pretty good. <laughs> one of you able to break that down for me so I can add it to the employee guidebook, please? Yeah, sure. So uh, all these machines he's using, you have the ability to copy and paste settings between them. This is really handy in normal gameplay because you can set up one machine to build the way that you want it to, copy its settings, paste it on a whole bunch of others, and it sets up much quicker than normal. In this situation, though, the thing that Epiphany is doing is uh, what we call the 007 glitch, uh, named because it basically requires zero inputs and essentially zero energy uh, and was discovered on patch 7, hence the name. Um, and the way it works is when you first open the menu, uh, you can copy settings even when you haven't set anything up yet. And it copies sort of like the null settings state for that machine. If you then take those settings and paste it on another machine that's already producing, it puts it in this weird limbo state where it kind of thinks it's producing, but it isn't. If at that point you then select something for it to produce, even though the machine has no inputs, it just starts producing it anyways for free. Um, that's part one. The second part is that you also want to be able to overclock it, make it go faster than normal. Uh, this can be done by setting the production rate of the machine down to 1% of its normal production rate, so it takes 1% of the energy, uh, pasting the null settings on it, overclocking it to 250%, adding the uh, material to it, and then it will produce at 250% speed at 1% of the cost. So build in all sorts of stuff real fast, real cheap. Yeah, so I'm finishing up the initial factory here. Uh, once I'm done with that, we're going to be researching uh, something called alien DNA, which is going to allow us to 
basically uh, produce as much money as we want, uh, which we're going to be using to buy uh, parts for building the factory later, because I don't want to do it myself. That's too much work. Yeah, using uh, alien DNA to uh, fund your entire factory, not financial advice. But it is advice that Fix-It would like to know. Free money is definitely something we need for more factory building. Thank you. Also, important question, Mr. Runner Epiphany. Where is your safety equipment? I don't see a hard hat. Uh, you can't see it because it doesn't fit on my head. My brain is a little bit too big, unfortunately. Uh, so they had to, for safety's sake, take it off. It's still going to have to be a demerit. Correct. Thank you. 50 DKP minus. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to prep those last two machines. These are the only ones I'll be using uh, after I dismantle the rest. Uh, now what I'm going to be doing is selecting everything else and tearing it down to take all the equipment and the pieces inside. Uh, so these machines have all been producing things for the last two or so minutes, uh, and I want all of that. But rather than go to each one and, and pick out the parts individually, I'm just going to sit here and dismantle them all once they're done making what I need. What we're looking for here is a couple different numbers. Uh, I have that to-do list there on the right, which I'm using as a guide to tell me exactly how much I need. Looks like we're a couple seconds away here. And there's 500 concrete, so it should be good now. Let's pop it in here and get moving on. Normally, you can only launch this once, but by pasting in what you need early, you can kind of glitch it into wanting to send multiple things at once. So we're able to send three pods instead of just one. And specifically, that third pod that got sent was selected specifically because when you submit a pod, there's a time limit between when you can send the next one um, and that last one was chosen just because it has a relatively short return time. So if you look in the upper right corner of the screen, you can see it says pod will return in whatever it says. Two, about three minutes. Two minutes and 42 seconds. So he can't send off the next uh, pod until that completes. And so a three-minute pod is used there because that's about how much time it's going to take Epiphany to get to the next step. Yep. So we just bought our first batch of building materials. Now I'm going to use them immediately to make the second factory of this run. This time using assemblers instead of constructors, which take two inputs instead of one. So a fun story about the uh, the 007 glitch. It was uh, originally shown in a three package percent run. Now, back when it was first discovered, the three package percent run took about four hours to complete. Um, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere one day, this runner named uh, Zidu yep. submitted a two and a half hour run, severely undercutting every other run that had been on, on the uh, docket so far. Um, very casually just dropped that in, but then also in the run explained this glitch and took a bunch of time and effort to uh, make it so other people could jump in and do the same. Um, never submitted any other runs before or after that, and as far as we can tell, has never submitted any other run for any other game. So literally just kind of appeared out of the ether, uh, submitted this super helpful bug for everyone else to use to make the game run so much faster, and then just kind of vanished again. So I thank you for that. We can consider him our angel. <laughs> he was an employee of the month. Thanks them for their service. We gave him a pizza party. <laughs> Yeah, so you can see me doing the, the glitch here again. What I'm doing is I'm going to each constructor. I'm giving them enough inputs to start producing. You see that thing turn to constructing 0%, and then I move away after pasting the null recipe into them. I'm going to grab some more power shards here, and I'm going to get them all producing. I think we have time for one quick donation. OK, I got $50 from Trash Cat that says, hello, it is I, your local safety inspector. I would like to applaud the couch and runner for their adherence to OSHA standards. However, cancer is not OSHA compliant and should be forcefully removed from the premises. In the background, Fix It is also helping to research cancer and how we can prevent it. But remember, by donating to AGDQ here, you can also help us get further in that research. Thank you for your fix-it compliance. I absolutely appreciate that donation. Why do I have a power slug in my clipboard? Did one of you find this? Oh, that's not OSHA safe. We can turn that into parts. I'll say, the runner needs this if you can hand it off. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to get a bit interesting here. So because we had a grid trip, uh, we're going to actually have to re-clock all these machines. That's OK. It happens sometimes. A little bit bad for safety, but it's not the end of the world. Ironically, the reason something like this can happen is because I set up the factory too fast. <laughs> yeah, so talk about the 007 glitch again. Everything takes basically zero power, except that there is a uh, caveat to that. The moment that you start a machine running for like the first small period of time that it runs, it runs at full power. So if you are too fast and you enable machines too quickly, it can cause your grid to get overrun because the grid is not set up to actually be able to power this many machines. It's you know, just enough to cover them with the glitch. So 
Yep, so we're going to go around here and toss in that new recipe. And in the meantime, we probably have time for a couple other donations. And there's so many to choose from. They are rolling in. $50 from CJ Lim 2007. So excited to see my favorite runner break one of my favorite games. Good luck, Epiphany. We got $50 from Spider who says, Fix It strongly recommends the use of donations in aid to fight against cancer. Good luck on the run, Epiphany. I'll donate another $25 for a bean bounce. I think you're required to by the user uh, guidebook to do that bean bounce now. $25 more towards cancer research if you could. <laughs> when we have time. We'll have to go find one, yeah. We had, do we have one right here on the couch with us, true. actually? Uh, if anyone is curious about all the lovely plushies we have with us, there is a satisfactory prize package that you can be entered to win with a large enough donation. T-Pat, how much is that, if you could remind us? Ooh, give me a moment to look that up. Absolutely. But tell us more about these amazing plushies, since they're right in front of us. We want to go from Max, where's the side here? Yes, we have a beautiful cast of characters here, starting with our fluffy-tailed hog. And, of course, the fan-favorite lizard doggo. We also have the lovely confusing creature, or our, uh, our bean. The bean. The bean. There is uh, also some sweaters included, which is really cool, including this fantastic uh, fix-it sweater. I'm not going to fully unfold it, because I probably can't fold it properly again afterwards. There's also this Christmas sweater-like one. There's a couple more plushies that are still in the prize room. There's also a skateboard. It looks fantastic. I don't know how we can make that safe in the workplace, but if you donate and win it, I can't realistically say anything. I think Scent is actually taking notes behind the stage right now on the prize bundle. Uh, it is a $50, $50 donation, and it's the whole bundle. So it's all the plushies and the t-shirts and everything, and they all look amazing. Shout out to Lizard Doggo for donating that prize package. Thank you so much. Epiphany, how are we feeling? Where are we at? All right, so we just finished fixing up that grid, uh, and we are now starting to complete the factory that we're going to need for this first package here. So again, as a bit of a reminder, uh, in SGDQ 2022, uh, we did a package percent in about 21 minutes. Uh, today, we'll be doing it in closer to 10. But that depends. What kind of time are we looking at right now? Yeah, current, I'm seeing we're just about to hit 12 minutes. Perfect. 12. Look at so all we're those cutting the time in about yeah. half. So at this point, this is where Epiphany is using all of that money from, you know, the uh, hog DNA in order to buy additional parts. Yep. As a heads up, you cannot turn the prize package fluffy-tailed hog into any hog DNA. We don't advise that. Yeah, so we're going to get a reset here. Um, we got to do it one more time because, ironically, and this is one of the actually things that are the most interesting about satisfactory speedrunning, if you go too slow, you run out of biomass, and then you face more power problems. It's a little bit of a compounding issue here, but it's no big deal. We should have this back up and running in a couple moments. What I want to make sure that I do is get everything working. You sometimes have to trip it a couple times. And once we see this thing take back on, we'll be good to, there we go. Uh, we'll be good to set these up one more time. I'm also going to go ahead and make some biomass to be safe. And I can actually, once again, make use of this glitch here and just, ha just have this guy make it for me. Thank you very much. I do like to see the efficiency going on. I will uh, definitely recommend you to the higher ups for a slight raise of one more lizard doggo pet per day. Such luxury. Not everybody gets that. Does that cost more or less than the traditional EV pet? <laughs> I'd say it's about similar. Yeah. They're both very beloved within their own spheres. One just a little more slimier. <laughs> we love it anyways. Doing one more quick go around and then we'll be pasting in smart plating. The good news is because of this extra setup time, uh, and another thing that I actually really like about this game, uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're a little bit behind on one part, the factory makes up for you. So in this particular example, uh, even when I am going through and fixing some machines, other machines are working. And so the, the game kind of, or speedruns, I should say, um, they, they compensate for, for some small issues by, by giving you boosts in other areas. 
But what also makes that fun is you get to improvise a little bit. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to be switching up the run a little bit. We're going into non-marathon safe situations, but I'm pretty confident. <laughs> Audience, definitely don't applaud for non-marathon safety, if we could. Thank you. We're just going to go ahead and put this space elevator on top of a pine tree. That's one of my favorite places in the world. That's a perfect place to go. That's a demerit. Steal that, and we are going to get on to steel production. So I get for another uh, multi-submit here. Yep. So the reason we didn't submit base building earlier is because it has a two-minute return time, and that actually ends up being much more useful here, uh, where we're going to be making one more milestone to finish this run. So I'm going to need to make a couple of rotors here because I don't quite have enough building materials. Uh, normally you're supposed to make a few hundred on your own. Uh, instead we're going to buy all of the ones that we need and then make like 12. It's very good use of your employee benefits package using the awesome shop there. Thank you very much. And how many more rotors are we going to end up needing? I believe it's usually around eight? Uh, it's around 16. Around 16? Like that. Yeah. Off by 2x there. Fortunately, by the time I'm done setting up these machines, uh, we'll probably have finished making them all. I love the background music in this game. I can't get over how good everything about it is. It feels great to play, and it sounds great just to be in the ambiance. Shout out to Analog Sense. Yeah, satis Satisfactory has that terrible, terrible thing where uh, it convinces you that you're having a good time and at peace, and then all of a sudden it's four in the morning and you really need to go to bed. All right, looks like we've got another trip here, so I'm going to pop that into underdrive, and we're going to do this one more time. Maximal underdrive. Do you think we have some time for some more donations? We always have time for donations. $50 from Saiyan. It says, personally, I think this run is more than satisfactory. It's awesome. Can't wait to see Mario 64 played on a drum, so let's all donate to make that happen. It was an incredible interview if some of you didn't see it. It's going to be an amazing run. Definitely suggest you tune I, in. I think that and the, like one of the Pokemon runs later is what I'm personally looking forward to most. So yeah, let's and donate to get the bonus run. Absolutely. Please do donate for that. And remember, if you donate a minimum of $50, you're entered for this amazing satisfactory prize package. So you're doubling up there. You're helping the marathon. You're adding to it. And you have a chance to win amazing things. I think we got time for another donation. Of course, we got $50 from Wolf who says, love the runs, have been playing tons of Satisfactory. I, so I am hyped for this run. Love to hear the love. Love to hear the love, yeah, honestly. It's great to see how many people are super hyped to see a run like this on day GDQ. I know two years ago when I got to be on the couch with Epiphany, I had no idea people were speed running this game. I was definitely doing the exact opposite in my playthroughs, so it was great to see how much faster it could go. I'm always mind blown, and in two years, the progress that has been made is sincerely incredible. Two years ago, Epiphany, how long would two package percent have been? Two About package was, 40? I had just gotten it to 58 minutes. 58. And, and that was a huge now. achievement. Yeah. That's incredible, the time that has been saved in just two years. So shout out to Zidu, shout out to Spider, who have helped develop this run to be so much faster in the time being. There we go. All right, let's toss these back in here. And then once we are done setting up the first two pieces of our, uh, pro our second package, then we are going to go unlock the third milestone here. I think we have time for another donation real quick, T-Pat. You're getting so much love for this run. It is amazing. We got $250 from Goose. I've put hundreds of hours into this game and haven't beat it. Watching you destroy it is amazing. Yeah, another thing that uh, I actually wanted to mention that I think is uh, pretty fun about this run is, did you know that four package runs used to take approximately uh, 17 hours? Well, now they take only, I think, two. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, we're going to toss these in here. Looks like we are... Looking for a couple more rotors. I'm going to actually steal them from you and you. And we're going to toss that in here. Milestone reached. Logistics can be improved with a larger storage container, enhanced conveyor belt efficiency, as well as the ability to store excess power for later use. Thanks, Ada. An additional project part can now be constructed. <laughs> Further progress to the next phase is now possible. 
How many of the project parts do we currently have unlocked now? Uh, we have now unlocked all three, all three, and we are producing them all. As you can see in that tooltip, uh, I've got some versatile frameworks ready to go. I've got some smart plating, and now it's just to wait on them to finish doing their work. You know, I think it's a good time to pet some of the plushies we have here. And of course, if any donations would like to say which ones we should pet, we will give them extra. Uh, how about uh, let's just say one pet per $50 donation? I would love to do that. Okay, $50 from Edward Mollis. My husband loves Satisfactory, and I'm loving this run, GDQ Pride. $50 from Power Clock, Satisfactory prize pack. N now, wow, now I gotta get in on this. $50 from Stealthy Dragon, gotta donate amazingly fast factory building and the very good boy Lizard Doggo. $50 from Hobo Shoe, donating to Charity Counts as work. $50 from Rickety Cat, I'm sure the OG team is all cheering you on. I am, don't worry about the hogs. Beside what you're crying for, we're just making oil. <laughs> A lot of $50 donations. I'd love to see some more coming, but thank you all so much for the love thus far. That's incredible. The Satisfactory Pet Sanctuary is open for business. <laughs> Part of your employee benefits package, of course. You get time in the sanctuary. I mean, I see thus far, we're already at $544,991. Can someone put us right over $545,000, like, right now? I would love you so much. I will give a pet just for that $9. Please, I want to see that happen right during this run. <laughs> How far can we get it before the end of this run? I do have to warn you, we're coming up on the end here. The last thing I'm looking for is this automated wiring. Looks like I need to hit about 60 or 70. Down to the wire. Ha. There ah. it is. <laughs> I just saw a hundred dollar donation came through. Whew. So T Pat, how much are we at now? In total? Yes. Five hundred and forty five thousand oh. dollars for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. You love to see it. Good work, team. All right, time's coming up. And yep, as soon as I pull this lever to the bottom part at send, we are at time. And, and time. time. Wait, can you get a beam bounce in? I don't know if that's... Let's see that thing go off to space. Bye. Kerchoo! There it goes. <laughs> there goes my hero. And once again, thank you for watching, everybody. I'm Epiphany. Uh, behind me are Max, Sors, Aaron, and Zenadir. Thank you all for helping me explain some of the crazy stuff that goes on during this run. There's a lot to pack into 15 or 16 minutes. <laughs> You both broke laws in the employee handbook and the <laughs> principles of science that you've produced something out of nothing, but the efficiency's there, so you get a pass from me. Job well done. All right, that should be all from us. Yep. Yeah, thank you.